the seeker and the teacher. Some 2,500 years ago, in the park of Lumbini, situated in the Himalayan foothills near the Indo-Nepalese border, a baby boy was born to Queen Mahamaya. This child, called Siddhartha, was destined to become the Buddha, one of the greatest teachers in world history. The young prince grew up in the court of his father, King Sudhodana, in the midst of pleasure and luxury. During his childhood and adolescence, Sudhodana tried assiduously to prevent Siddhartha from seeing the ills and sufferings of this world. But destiny was stronger than the king's will. The prince came into contact with the suffering of the world three times. First, he saw an old man and understood that everyone one day has to become old. Then he met a sick man and finally he saw a man's corpse. These three sights and his meeting with a wandering mendicant troubled his mind so much that he decided to leave his princely life, his young wife Yashodhara and his newborn son Rahula and to search for an answer to his deep question. Where is the way out of old age, sickness and death? What is the way to permanence? After years of ascetic sadhana, having thus experienced extreme renunciation as well as luxury and pleasure, Siddhartha chose the middle path and attained enlightenment on the full moon night in the month of May under a peepal tree at Bodhgaya. He had become the Buddha, the awakened one. For a few days, he hesitated. How could he communicate his experience? How could he make people understand his teachings? Then the decision was taken. He went to the deer park and taught the four noble truths to his earlier companions. First, the truth of the universality of suffering. Second, the truth of the cause of suffering. Third, the truth of cessation of suffering. Fourth, the way to Nirvana. For 45 years, he went on walking from village to another, from one city to the next. He met people of all castes, all ages. In a very structured society in which the Brahmin caste had codified most of the customs and the relationships of the time, he met everyone, treated everyone with the same respect and taught everyone not according to rank or caste, but according to the person's understanding and sincerity. He spoke to kings and children, to rich merchants and poor peasants, to dacoits and women. He adapted his teachings, telling stories or parables to the simple folk, or expounding the deepest psychological theories or the most profound practices of meditation to the more advanced disciples. Up to his last day, he was then 81 years old. He taught and his death was his last and supreme teaching on the impermanence of the human form. <laughs>